All right, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Mamba Moments. And we have our first Kobe Bryant teammate, Josh Powell here. Amazing player, amazing relationship with Kobe. Uh, Josh, man, so excited to have you on the podcast today. Always appreciate you as a person, a player, what you did for Laker fans, and just you in general, man. And so in you've before said that Kobe was your big brother. Can you elaborate a little bit on what you mean by that and whatever you're comfortable sharing about your relationship with the Black Mamba? I think it was just, you know, more than a teammate. You know what I mean? And um, I was blessed to be able to connect with him on a different level. Um, we had a lot of personal conversations. Um, I know that, you know, talking to him about uh, my marriage at the time, talking to him about, you know, being a father, you know, just the ins and outs and ups and downs. And, and, and also, you know, from a player standpoint, you know, um, and, and a lot of times him just, you know, helping me through things and telling me to be patient and don't worry, things are going to work out. You know, just, just a lot of things, just the ups and downs and just knowing that he was somebody I can call to count on, like, for, for you know, many things. You know what I'm saying? Advice, support. Um, wow. I know he was... He showed up for baby showers and wow. uh, he showed up and helped me present a check to my high school when I was uh, donating 20000 uh, for a, a technology center uh, in my foundation's name. I mean, the list goes on. Like, he, he's just a, a amazing, amazing human being. And I'm just grateful. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, yeah. Absolutely, man. Wow. That's, that's amazing. Like incredible. Thank you so much for sharing. You know, Kobe wasn't friends with everyone off the court. And I know you guys had a really special relationship as, as someone who's followed Kobe my whole life. I know how important you were to him and I've, I've heard it. I've seen you guys interact. And so what do you think it was that really led to you and Kobe having such a special bond? Because it, it was something really unique. Uh, my dedication. He saw me put the time in. Uh, I, I think that he appreciates me as a professional. Um, you know, the fact that I wasn't scared of, of anything, you know, either the big moments, I wasn't worried about making mistakes. I just went hard. Um, I think that's the thing that started it off, you know, with us being as close and, and going where, it, where it went. And, um, uh, I was really intrigued and wanted to really see how he moved on and off the court and being able to get into his space, coming to those three o'clock, four o'clock AM workouts, um, wow. you know, being a part of the, as soon as we get to the city, going to the arena, you know, staying after game. Like I've, I've done it all. Like we all, we've had nights where we've hung out and I've slept for an hour and he's knocking on my door, you know, <laughs> let's go. Let's go, motherfucker. You said you wanted to go. Let's go. So it's it's um, it started with that. And then um, I was also blessed to see how he moved in the business world. You know, uh, watching him in meetings, you know what I mean? Some of the people that he met going some of the places and listening to some of the ideas, some of the, um, you know, plans and things moving forward. Um, just a lot. You know what I mean? Like just really yeah. being able to be a part of it and really learning the ins and outs so it's really special no kidding man uh that is awesome especially when you bring up you know showing up in different cities going to the gym uh recently julius randall saying kobe gave him that advice went viral so it's really cool to hear that story and you know something i saw that you did an interview with buzz sports radio sports shop and you were asked if kobe ever said anything to motivate you but you said that his presence alone was enough. Can you elaborate a little bit on, on what you mean by that and what made the presence of the Black Mamba just so powerful and unique and different? I think that when, you, when we all are in front of greatness, um, think about it from a, a person who's not an athlete and just the excitement, right? The, the, yeah. the, maybe the nervousness, the anxiety, the you know, whatever it is that you're experiencing at that moment, just by being in somebody's presence that you're like, whoa, this is crazy. Like I'm, I'm yeah. this person, I'm around this person. So when it's one of your fellow peers, 
like he was a teammate. So whenever he walked into, you know, the gym and we would have practices or work, like everybody went from where they're at. They already know they got to go to another level just because of who he is. And that's, that's the type of presence that he had because he, he expects that, you know what I mean? Like those two years I was there, he practiced often. It wasn't that he missed time, but even the time that he did miss, and he was on the sidelines coaching or helping us out, you could still feel his presence. So guys were still going hard because they talking shit. You know, they're jaw jacking yeah. at each other. <laughs> you know what I mean? He He's saying things that's upsetting people and just, it's just all of that. But that's what made us as good as we were um, in order for us to get to that point and compete for championships another two years after they lost uh, to Boston. Wow, man. That is, that is absolutely amazing. And, you know, that brings me into a question here. When I bring up the two championships you won with Kobe, what are the main memories that sticks out to you or what goes through your mind? Well, for one, I, cause I want to make sure everybody knows this, man, those, those two years, it was like, we all were like a big family. Yeah. You know, I know, I know that, you know, Kobe is, uh, the staple of, you know, one of the, especially when you're talking about the Lakers organization, um, but that family feel like we yeah. all hung out, we all supported each other. We all went to events together. You know, we, we all worked our tails off, uh, did extra things together, went out to eat. You know, we, we, we did a lot of on and off the court things together as one. So that's one thing that sticks out. And the other thing that sticks out when it comes to him is, I mean, you hear the horror stories per se, but I think that me being able to be around, I understand number 24, me me being able to be around, like I understand the number 24, but I also understand the number eight. And I think that's the thing that that was a blessing about being around because you get it. Like, it's nothing personal. You're just talking about a guy that wants to win so bad that people look at his demeanor. They look at how he was on the court or off the court and they might take it personal. You know, they might say he's an asshole that he's difficult to play with and all of that, but you just understand that he wants it so bad. So, you know, he, he goes through those times, like he still was who he was, but number 24 more so, integrated the whole team like we all like he knew that in order for us to get to that point of championship that we all had to do our part because I think after they won it Shaq left and he spent the next five years kind of doing it by himself yeah he understood that that was that transition like okay they got pow it was like oh I got me another dog with me they had LO they had Luke Walton they had all of those guys wow uh, Andrew Bynum but then it's like it clicked and then they went to the finals lost. And then it was like, all right, now we know what we got to do. We want this thing. Let's, fo- let's focus. In it. Wow, man, that that's incredible. And, and especially to hear that and yeah, sort of how misunderstood uh, Kobe could be that, that leads really well into the next thing I wanted to ask you, you know, everyone always asks you about the basketball aspect with Kobe. And so I wanted to focus a little bit on, you know, Kobe as a person and you've shared some interesting stories. Um, you know, what was, what would you say was the most underrated or overlooked aspect of Kobe Bryant's off the court as a person? Him as a, as a husband and as a father. Yeah. And I, I think that because, um, you know, that that unfortunate situation that happened with him, that, um, you know, a lot of people pass judgment, you know what yep. I mean, based on who he is and, and other things. But I think it's truly amazing that a guy, he re- revamped, like, his personality, the brand, the perception of him. Like, he did a whole 180, and obviously he's a killer on the court, but the fact that he did things in such a way, um, changed his number. I mean, it was just a lot that happened where people were no longer really talking about what had happened. Yeah. And that's the part that I appreciate because he showed you as a husband, he showed you as a father, 
size to him that made people fall in love with him all over again. And I feel like that's the thing that hurt when he passed because chapter two was so amazing that people were blown away. Like, Whoa, look at this guy. Like we know what he accomplished in chapter one and that was greatness, but look at what he's doing as a husband and as a father, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Like that, that part was really, you know, incredible. Totally. No, thank you. Thank you for sharing all that. I couldn't agree more. Uh, as a younger kid, I had to go through falling in love with Kobe all over again. And, and man, that's the perfect way to sum up for sure. Because once he scored 81, became number 24 Kobe. And, and that's something too, as people who watch the Lakers, and you could tell that team was a family. You could tell the bond you guys had. And that was amazing to watch. So when you talk about the eight and the 24, what I kind of want to know is for you, you know, what was the biggest difference or the main aspect in Kobe's leadership as number 24 on those championship teams that you remember? Uh, I think it's, it was more so the fact that he didn't, even though he, he always is the type that feels like he, he can do it by himself, but he leaned on us. Wow. Like he encouraged us to, you know what I'm saying? Like, because there were times where you look at different games throughout all of those playoff series where Powell had to get busy and carry us. Lamar stepped up. D. Fish stepped up in these moments where they, that he, that they, everybody stepped up in these moments. And, uh, and uh, you know, sorry, sorry about that. My, kid, my kids keep calling me, but... <laughs> But uh, they they stepped up in these moments, and you know that's that's because you know the foundation that that he was building. You know what I mean by trusting in them a lot more. You know, like I said, he can score thirty, he can score forty, he can probably average fifty if he wanted to. But yeah. it got to a point where he knew Powell had to do get his. You know, Lamar had to do and get his. Andrew had to do and get his. You know. And picking and choosing when to involve people at certain times, like it was just a, a, a balancing act, you know what I mean? And yeah, um, uh, to to have a guy like Derek Fisher alongside with him to kind of be the Batman to the Rob, I mean the Robin to the Batman, um, and giving you that balance. Wow, that that is amazing. And we got a few more questions here, but one thing that I gotta ask is. Do you have everybody's got their Kobe moment? Do you have a favorite Kobe story or Kobe moment from on the court practice that just sticks out as like, wow, this dude was different? I think every practice you say, wow, this dude was different. I think for me, my very first moment in preseason when uh, I popped him when we were setting the single double screen and roll, we were working on some defensive stuff and uh. I popped him like popped him good coming off the screen. And he was like, all right, motherfucker, you got one more time. Do that again. And I was like, shit, bro, come back over on this side. And I think that's the <laughs> moment where it was like a mutual respect because I'm, I'm fighting for a job. You know what I mean? I was on a partial. That was my first year. I had a partial guarantee. And, um, I mean, I approached, approached it how I'd approach anything else, you know what I mean? And, and just going hard and giving it my all and just having a positive attitude and just really enjoying the moment. And I didn't back down. I think that's the part that he appreciated because no matter what, like we had a lot of moments, you know, with everybody on that team where people were at each other's throats, you know, almost to the point of fighting and blows and, that's what made the family stronger. Definitely. Push, pushing each other like that and challenging each other like that. Wow. 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 That's, that's absolutely amazing. And, and when you bring that up, you know, something I noticed about Kobe and I know he respected in you too. So you'd have an interesting insight is he like had an almost inhuman ability to not care what others thought. And I'm wondering, you know, how do you think, what's your insight in how you think he was able to do that and how that worked for him specifically? I think because of his obsession. 
And the fact that he trusted in, there's many clips where he talks about the hours of work that he put in and how he prepared. And it's like, when you do that so much, it removes that fear. So then it's like, you don't worry about whether you fail or succeed because you know what you've put in. It's just all about going forward and doing what you, what you got to do. Like if you're really dedicated to it, don't get me wrong. Cause I, you know, if people are in positions and they're shitty because they don't care, but, if you're dedicated to working and that type of time, you're going to have the craziest amount of confidence. You're just going to have it, you know, to the point where you don't, you don't think about failing or, or what's going to happen. You just perform and you go through with it. And if you do fail, you get back up so quickly because you're on to the next, like you don't, you don't hang your hat on what just happened. Wow. Wow. It's the that same is... thing in winning because when we, when we won the championship, it was like, yo, we got to we gotta do this again. This ain't enough. Yeah. Like, yeah, we'll celebrate for right now, but we want another one. Like, this just doesn't stop here. That was the mindset and the attitude that we had. Wow, man. That's, I mean, that's truly incredible insight, and, and it makes perfect sense uh, why you and Kobe bonded the way you did and, and your understanding of that. So I got two memories to ask you about and then a final thing to close this off. First of all, when you bring up the championships, do you remember standing on the stage with Kobe, with his family, getting the Bill, you know, the finals MVP, David Stern, and, and what's going through your mind when you're actually on that stage and you're a champion and you guys share this bond? I think one of the things is for me is like, man, this is for my family. This is for my people in Atlanta. You know what I mean? Like where I grew up at, the South Side. Yeah. That's one of the things that I was definitely thinking of. Um, the bigger moment for me was the fact that after we beat Boston, like I had my son on the stage. Like he was just born. He was like three months. And it's really cool that a lot of documentaries, a lot of books, a lot of pictures, he's in those photos. Like it's the coolest shit ever. Mm -hmm that he's a part of history in some way, shape or form. I just think that's really cool. That's awesome, man. That's, that's great. And then one other, and, and congrats again, man. Well, you made so many people happy with those championships. And so one other thing, one other memory I wanted to ask you, you did this 2012 East Bay interview with Kobe on shoes for the magazine. And that was so fun to watch. I highly recommend everyone check out the video on YouTube. And I'm just wondering what you remember about that day. You know, let me tell you what's really crazy is like I I interviewed Katie, Michael Kidd Gilchrist, LeBron, Kobe, like all in one day. Wow. That was crazy. That's yeah, that was really man. crazy. And that and that was right after LeBron came off of the, you know, his first win um for finals. Yeah. Yeah. So no. It was just like, you know, having that chance to really connect with those guys um, off the court, I think is a lot, you know, it's, it's more fun. It's a lot doper because, you know, everything don't always have to be about basketball. You get to see people for who they are and in a different element. You know, we talked apparel, we talked shoes, but just having the chance to really talk about you know, other things that they were interested in. And, you know, I did my research to be able to bring some fun to the interview. So that Definitely. was a really cool experience. That's awesome, man. That's that's really great. And I, I loved watching that interview with you and Kobe, East Bay Magazine. And so, you know, for, for the final question here, I'd love to know what is the main lesson that you learned and take with you in life from Kobe Bryant or anything else you want to say on the experience. But yeah, I'd love to hear the major lesson you take away from him. When he passed, um, it broke me because it's like, he's, he's like a superhero. Yeah. And for that, something so tragic to happen, it was like a clear reminder that tomorrow's never promised and you must live for today, enjoy today, be present in the moment for today. 
And I feel like a lot of us, we take it for granted because I'll talk to you tomorrow. Something as simple as I'll get to it next week. And we got to be thankful. I think that I'm, I'm grateful that I've had the chance to be in a part of his life and legacy in some way. And he's had a chance to be a part of mine, my life and my legacy in some way. Um, and not just for me, but for everybody. And, and um, I just continue to pray for his family, his kids, um, you know, Vanessa. Um, Cause that's such a heart, it's a heartfelt moment. You know, I went and got a tattoo um, to pay my respects to him and Gigi. Um, because that, that to me was probably the biggest reminder. And you know, as, as other in the black community, we don't, we don't see a lot of good examples of what a, a man looks like, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, I felt like he was one of those people that we all could look up to and see how he was doing it all around and respect that. You know, I think that another example is LeBron. I know he gets a lot of hate, but we haven't heard of anything crazy. He hasn't gone to jail. Like there hasn't been any stories that came out and said he did this or he did that. Like he's somebody that's done it by the book and we got to appreciate that while he's here. You know, for somebody that looks like me, that's a, a good example of that. And and again, the, the list goes on. I'm just I'm just trying to paint that picture when it comes to Kobe that I appreciate watching him as a family man and as a businessman and then as a basketball player. Unbelievable, man. Thank you so, so much. Uh, for sharing your insight, for for really helping everyone, you know, relive the inspiration of the Black Mamba and just how much how much of a role model um, he really was, and the legacy will live on forever, man. This was so special that you you took the time to share your insights. Now, Josh, man, we we got to give you a plug. We want to know where to find you. I know I'd love to hear a bit about uh, Twenty One Reasons to Give Foundation and just yeah, where you're at, where you're up to, and where the people listening can find you, man. Um, check out my foundation, 21 reasons to give.org. We're also on Instagram, 21 reasons to give. Um, I have a t-shirt line, an affirmation line, very positive, um, line that me and my kids came up with t-shirt shawty.co. Um, and then of course, follow me, Josh 21 Powell on Instagram, JP 21 reasons on Twitter. That's so awesome. I'm, I'm out here and just continuing to serve and, and doing right by the most high. Um, I have a book that I'm working on. I yeah. have um, uh, uh, this uh, training uh, company that I've been doing, uh, doing a lot of work in the mental health space. So I got some different projects that I'm working on in that aspect. Um, and just being, you know, a, a, a father and, and going through life, you know, each and every day, continuing to better myself, you know, that's, basically the ins and outs and, and, and what I'm doing, but, you know, just paying attention and I'm open to different opportunities, got some other things that are going on and in the work. So I'm just staying the course and staying with it. And I'm thankful, man, you keep doing what you're doing. Congratulations to you on your podcast. Salute, give you your roses. Y'all make sure y'all give them his roses and uh, make sure y'all follow, spread the word to your friends and family that they follow you. So thank you for allowing me the chance to come on here and give a little bit about my story. Dude, this was this was an absolute joy and pleasure, and I've always appreciated you and and your career. And you know, definitely check me out on socials. But every subscription for this podcast um, will go towards the Mamba and Mamba Cita Foundation and keeping the legacy of Kobe Bean Bryant alive. I'll have other projects I'm working on, but this one's for the Black Mamba and Josh. Man, uh, thank you so much for being here, Mamba out, Mamba forever. <laughs>